This lesson is about an important part of CT image processing called reconstruction. The digital signal leaving the data acquisition system is considered raw data. It cannot be viewed by the technologist because this information is unprocessed data, sometimes called scan data. Reconstruction is the process through which this raw data becomes image data or processed data. Raw data is stored only in the CT control console, but the image data is what's sent to PACS for the radiologist's interpretation. So how does the reconstruction process actually work? There's actually three separate steps, all which contribute to reconstruction. The first step is interpolation, after that is convolution, and then finally filtered back projection. Each of these processes are mathematical manipulations of the data acquired by the detectors. And without these manipulations, the CT image would just be a blurry mess of meaningless pixels, kind of like ultrasound. Let's start by talking about interpolation. Interpolation is an aspect of the reconstruction process that is unique just to helical scanning. But it's a simple idea that's used in many other applications as well. Here's an example of interpolation. You're given a series of three positions. Position A, position B, position C, and position D. And we're given the values for three of those positions. A equals one, B equals two, C, we don't know the number, and D is equal to four. Based on the surrounding information, we can interpolate with a high level of confidence that C is most likely equal to three. So what does this have to do with helical scanning? As the tube and the detectors rotate around the patient, these attenuation readings are collected in a spiral pattern. But when we view images in CT, we don't want to see a spiral. We need to see axial sections. And so the computer actually has to reconstruct this data into perfect planar slices from the spiral volume of data. And this process is called interpolation. We don't have axial slices, so we have to interpolate them from the spiral of CT information that comes from a helical scan. Once this information is compiled together through interpolation, the next step is convolution. Convolution is the process through which the scan data is mathematically filtered to better visualize specific tissue types. And unfortunately, there's lots of different names for these mathematical filters. They're sometimes called reconstruction algorithms, reconstruction kernels, or even reconstruction filters. The key word in all of these is reconstruction. The good thing is that convolution filters basically have just two forms. There are smoothing reconstruction algorithms and edge enhancing reconstruction algorithms. And in these two images, we're actually looking at the same slice of a patient's temporal bones, but the images have been reconstructed with different algorithms. In other words, they've been convoluted in a different way. The image to the left has been convoluted with a smoothing filter, and that's exactly what it does. It softens the edges of all of the anatomical structures. But when we're looking at bone, this isn't especially helpful. The image to the right was correctly reconstructed or convoluted using an edge-enhancing algorithm. Some scanners would call this a bone algorithm. In bone, we want to see sharp edges in all of the anatomic structures. For other parts of the body, we would use a different kind of reconstruction algorithm. Both of these images represent a patient's brain in the same slice. But these images have been convoluted or reconstructed with different reconstruction algorithms. In the image to the left, we can clearly see the soft tissues of the brain. They're nice and smooth because this image was reconstructed with the standard algorithm. The standard algorithm is a common name for a smoothing reconstruction filter. The image to the right was incorrectly reconstructed with the bone algorithm. The bone algorithm would be useful for looking at bone, but not when we're trying to look at the brain. Most reconstruction filters will fall into the category of being a smoothing filter, like the standard algorithm, or an edge-enhancing filter, like the bone algorithm. 
but some vendors may have a wide range of edge enhancing algorithms. For example, if we look at this series of three images, we'll notice that the image on the left has the least amount of noise, but also the least amount of detail because a smoothing algorithm was used. But in the last image to the right, this image was reconstructed with a strong edge enhancing algorithm. The result of this is the most detail present in the image, but also the most image noise. And so for the most part, reconstruction algorithms are going to be a balance between image noise and detail or spatial resolution. The last step in the reconstruction process is something called filtered back projection. Before this convoluted information can be viewed, it has to undergo this process. The name is self-explanatory. This is the process through which projections are compiled back onto each other. And the reason it's called filtered back projection is in CT we use a special mathematical filtration process that removes a star-like artifact that would otherwise be present through the back projection process. Remember in CT scanning, an individual slice is actually the compilation of multiple projections or views from around the patient. All of these views or projections do have to be compiled back onto each other and it's through the process of filtered back projection that we make that happen. This series of images shows six different images of the same objects, all using a different number of projections. Back projection reconstruction basically takes each view of the information inside of the projection and smears it across the image slice. More projections results in a truer representation of the shape of the object. You can see that these images are of one sphere, but when we only have two projections, as in the upper left corner, it's difficult to see what the image is of. But as we increase the number of projections to four, then six, and twelve, we can see a significant increase in the amount of detail and a truer representation of the object in the imaging field. The best image in this series was produced using 128 projections with filtration. You can see the benefit of using filtered back projection because the hazing and star-like artifact is almost completely removed. So just remember, three steps to the image reconstruction process. First is interpolation, which is unique to helical scanning. Next is convolution with the application of a reconstruction algorithm. And then finally, this process, filtered back projection.